Uh, this tutorial uh, is basically a continuation from where the last tutorial video was, um, was ending. So I believe we did question 6-73 and uh, we're going to continue. So starting from 6-75. So the question reads, the wall crane supports a load of uh, 700 pounds. Determine the horizontal and vertical components of reaction at the pins A and D. At the pins A and D. Also determine if the force in the cable at the winch W, the force in the cable at the winch W, uh, then uh, give A, B, C. A, B, C has a weight of 100 pounds. Give A, B, C has a weight of 100 pounds and member B, D has a weight of 40 pounds. So member B, D has a weight of 40 pounds. And then each member is uniform and has a center of gravity at its center. Okay, so they've given us the weights of these members. Member, member A, C has a weight, and that weight will be placed in the middle of uh, A, C, which is at B there. So I'm going to have a weight placed here, and then um, let's see the moving to the weight. So it has a weight of 400, so you expect 100 pounds weights placed there. Then remember BD from B to D also has a weight of 40 pounds. So the geometric center of this BD Maybe somewhere there you were expecting a weight there of 40 pounds. Okay. Uh, and then they want us to determine the horizontal and vertical components of the reaction that A and D. Uh, and also to determine the force in the cable uh, at the winch. So the force in this cable here. Okay. So just like in the previous questions, the essential thing here is to be able to come up with a free body diagram and begin your calculations from there. So we can isolate this, uh, this poly here and then do summation of the forces in the Y should, should be able to give us uh, the tension in these two cables. Then we have another free body diagram that will show um, member A, B, C, um, as well as we'll have another free body diagram that will just show member B, D. And then this question is similar to the one that we did earlier, uh, where you need to, okay, so at D, at D, you expect to have uh, reactions there, as well as at A, also reactions. I mean, at B, at A, you have a pin connection, so you have two reactions that you expect here. So a free body diagram will be as follows. This is the first free body diagram, and it shows us that uh, the tension in each of these cables is 350 pounds. And then um, when you look at Member A, B, C, the free body diagram. It happens to be this. Uh, While well, we have uh, the reactions AX and AY. Then at B, we have uh, BX as well as BY. Those are the reactions due to the pin connection that's at B. And then remember the tension in the cable is 350. So that's the same amount again of tension that's in, in this cable here, W. 
because this is the same cable going like that. So this, this is 350, it means also the tension here is 350. So this will be pulling away um, at this joint B here, to be pulling in the, in the negative direction, as well as to have um, some component here, some component in the Y, as well as the component in the X. So this 350 is, is this force placed at T and B. Uh, that's the one due to the tension there. Then we have um, the weight, which is 100 pounds also placed at B. And then you have 350 also, which is the tension in this cable that's pulling away in that one. So all these are the forces that you expect at B there. And then at C also you have uh, forces there. That's uh, the 700, which is uh, the summation of the two, two tensions, this tension and this tension, all of them pulling in this direction. So that gives us 700 there, uh, as well as the, you have the 350. That's due to tension in this other cable this side. So this gives us this free body diagram. And from here, all that we can do is, uh, we can take moments, if you choose to take moments about A. Um, remember BX won't have an impact on the moment about A. As well as this 350, it won't have an impact. And this other 350 here won't have an impact. But BY, BY uh, 100 pounds, 700 pounds, all these will have impact on the moment at A. And then uh, when you take moment about point A, the only unknown here will be BY and it happens to be this value here, which is um, 1.8 kilo pounds. Okay, then summation of the forces in the Y uh, gets us negative A, Y at A there, the negative 350 sign 60 degrees, that's uh, the Y component of, of uh, this 350. Then you also have uh, minus 100 also, which is this uh, value here. Then minus 700, which is this, and then plus the, the value we got for BY. So summation of the forces in the Y gets a 700 to be the amount of AY. And the, the assumed direction was uh, pointing downwards and it's given us the positive answer so our assumed direction was okay. Then we can do summation of the forces in the x. You have a x, you have a minus b x, then you have 350, then you have minus 350. This, uh, adding all of them, then also there's this x component due to this force which is placed at an angle of 60 degrees there at b. Um, which gives us negative 350 cosine 60 degrees. So AX and BX are known here. So the, you, you form up, if you come up with an equation which is AX is equal to BX plus 175. So that's basically an equation that will come from this member. So we need to have another free body diagram that will give this um, the forces in this member here, which is member B, D. So member B, D, looking at it, this is member B, D. Member B, D is no longer a two-force member because it has external forces. There's the impact of the weight uh, that's placed at uh, the midpoint. So if um, this is four feet, then four feet also in the width, then halfway, that's where the weight is going to act, which is two feet from point D. So when you have this free body diagram in this manner, remember this PX and BY are placed in this way, um, having in mind how we placed our BX and BY here. So here they face in this direction. So here they're facing the opposite directions. Then you can take moments, even at, uh, we can take moments at D, so in take moments at D, we'll have um, 
this BY is known and it's going to give a clockwise moment, so minus. And then this uh, BX is going to give a anti-clockwise moment, so it's going to be a positive here. Then you have uh, 40 multiplied by two, which is going to be minus as well because it's going clockwise and you're taking anti-clockwise moments to be positive. So this gives us BX, which is the, the only unknown in the equation of moment about G. Then you have um, summation of forces in the X. When we sum the forces in the X, you have a DX, which is going to be equal to this BX that's given at, uh, at B here. And then, um, you have you have a summation of the forces in the y. You have a dy, which is uh, they are known there. Then minus forty and minus eighteen zero three point one. Uh, I'm sure if you critically thought about it, you might be wondering why the weight of uh, the weight of member. A, B, C was not placed at uh, yeah, the weight of this member A, B, C was not placed when we're dealing with this free body diagram for this member for this member here, which is member B, T. We only placed it when we're dealing with member A, B, C. So the reason is simple because that weight was placed when dealing with this member. We can't place it again when we're dealing with this other member because it's like we'll be repeating uh would we'll be we'll be putting it twice so having that in mind uh is the reason why you don't have the weight placed here but you only have one weight which is in this member you can't place the weight twice okay so this is basically uh how we would go about this. So when you find, when you find uh, your dy, you find your dx, can replace in the equation one, which has the bx. I'm sure from this equation here, we we'll found bx to be this value, 18.23. So when you, place, when you place bx in this value, ax should be negative something. Um, so bx was 18.23 which is like 1.823, that's bx. Then the first equation that we had was ax is equal to bx plus 175. So after you evaluate this, uh, it gives us bx, which is uh, this value here. Adding the two gives us this value, which is uh, 2,000 pounds or two kilo pounds. So that's basically how we go about this question. The, the, the most tricky thing here was to, to be able to come up with this free body diagram the way it is here, the way it's shown here, as well as this free body diagram here. So uh, the next question is um, question 6-79, which reads, uh, the togo clamp is subjected to a force F the clamp is subject to a force F at the handle, determine the vertical clamping force acting at E. Determine the vertical clamping force that's acting at E. And E is here. Then they want the vertical force that's at E there. So as well, this, this is a machine. And then when you place, uh, when you place a force at, F here, which is more or less pressing it downwards, uh, you expect uh, some forces to be induced at this particular uh, position, which is E. So that's the magnitude that we are looking for. So um, we are going to have to get our free body diagram and be able to calculate for this force that is in this in this um, clamp. Okay, then uh, also so it's important to note that uh, member CD is a two-force member. And because it's a two-force member, it's 
its resultant is going to act along the same line, which is CD. This is a two-force member because it has no external forces acting on it. Okay, so we're going to have that that force CD placed in in this in this uh, in this direction. So we can have a free body diagram. A is a pin. I'm sure you can see from this. A is a pin. B is also a pin. So let's see our free body diagram. <laughs> free body diagram. So we have uh, a first free body diagram, which is going to to be for member B, C, up to the end where F is there. So at B, it's also a pin there. So expect two reactions. At C, um, because I've said this is a two force member, so it's we can just uh, isolate it and um, and have and have uh, the force just shown as one force here, the way it's shown here. And then at F also we have a force that's pressing downwards. So we can take moments about B. Uh, when you take moments about B, then you have an expression for, for this force F, as well as this, this force FCD, okay? So this is the, the expression, FCD happens to be 10.93F, because F were not given the magnitude of the force that was pressed at, at F there. And then we can term, you can uh, do summation of the forces in the Y. So when you sum the forces in the Y as well as summing the forces in the X, in the X it gives us this expression for BX. In the Y to give us the expression for BY in terms of F. Because remember FCD, we already have it now in terms of F also, so we can replace it. Such so a BY will also be in terms of F. Okay, then um, after that, you can draw the second free body diagram, which will now show the force at the clamp here. This force is a normal force placed at the point where you have the clamp here. So there's a force there, Fe, then the distance there is from the geometric properties here, there. Then you have um, By, which we would have gotten from summation of the forces in the y at that point. It's this value here. And then summation of the forces in the x gave us bx to be this value, which is this value shown here, we have this value here. Then uh, at a, at a, at a, as we mentioned earlier on, a is a pin, so expect two, two reactions at a, placed like that. Then pay attention to the way the reactions are shown at b. They're shown in opposite, uh, but equal in magnitude to the ones uh, at B on this first free body diagram. So just transfer them to this other free body diagram, same values. Then here, you can take moment about A. So when you take moment about A, you can have Fe uh, as the only unknown, and then you calculate for it, Fe is also equal to 3.64F. Then you can sum the forces in the y to give us what our a y is, and summation of the forces in the x. And it's going to show us that a x is equal to b x, according to that to that equation there. So this basically this was what we're looking for: the force at e in terms of f. So depending on what magnitude you place for f, you can have the reaction, the normal reaction, which is Fe, multiplying by this factor 3.64 to give us the magnitude of the reaction at F, I mean at E. So that's basically how we would go about that. And then you have uh, another question, which is question 6-81. It reads, the hoist supports the 175 kilonewton, uh, sorry, the hoist supports the 125 kg engine. Determine the force the load. Um, determine the force the load creates in members B, 
a DB and in member FB, which contains the hydraulic cylinder H. So we have um, we have this load here that's placed at G, and they want us to determine the force that's going to be in this um, in this hydraulic cylinder H. Uh, so we are saying determine the force, the load that this load will create in member DB. Member DB is here. So due to this weight, there will be some forces that will be induced in this member BD. And also in member FB. FB is so this member here. So here it's also essential to note that um, these are two force members. B D is a two force member, as well as B F is also a two force member. So you can just place on the one force, which is going one is going to go in this direction, the other one is going to go in this direction here, the direction for B D. Uh, then at A, it's a roller, you expect uh, one reaction there. At C is also a roller, you expect one reaction like that. So let's have first look at our free body diagram. Okay, so the first free body diagram was the isolation of uh, GFE. So GFE is this straight uh, member here. So at F, you just have one force there that's shown in this direction. And then you have uh, the weight here. This same 125 multiplied by 9.81 gives us uh, the weight in newtons. Then at E, it's a two force. I mean, it's a, it's a pin joint. So you have two forces there, which is EX and EY. Then also, Knowing the relationship of this triangle here, you have uh, this entire length here, which is three. So from this point to this point is three. Okay, then um, you have to also, you also have the distance from this point to this point, which is two. And from there to there is one. So, Basically, what we have is this. So if it's one, this is two, so it's going to be one, and this two maintains to be three from this point to this point. So then this other side here to be the root of three squared is um, three squared is nine plus one squared is one. So nine plus one, that's 10, so root of 10. That's this uh, length here. So once we place a force like that and we assume that it's in tension placed at, at uh, member, I mean at joint F, member GFE shows us that. So that will show us that um, Okay, our opposite side is three, then you have the adjacent side, if you're doing this angle here, as one. So you can be able to resolve this particular uh, force into the two components. And you can take moment about E. So the horizontal component of this force here won't have an impact on the, it won't have an impact on the moment, but the vertical component will have an impact on the moment about E. So this will be the only unknown because you already know the weight that's going to act at G there. So you can get the force in F H. So once you have the force in F H there, it's basically the same force that's going to, to act also at, at I mean I mean the force B B B BH to be the same magnitude, the same force there to be the same force that will be there. And we will see that in the next free body diagram.
So at E, taking moments at E, as I said earlier on, would, to give us the force there, which is 1.94. Then forces in the Y gives us e, EY, and forces in the X gives us AX. So these values could be transferred. We look at our next free body diagram. So for the next free body diagram, we isolate this, this member here. So when you isolate this member, uh, the, the forces on member G, F, E at joint E that we found, we transfer them back to uh, this member E, D, C, having in mind that they should be in opposite directions as opposed to the ones shown in member G, F, E. So having that in mind, in this, in this case, the point in X is in the positive, Y is in the negative. So when you come to this other free body diagram, X should be in there, positive Y should be in there, the negative X and then positive in the Y like that. Then remember for a two force member, uh, you expect only one force that will act along the line uh, B, D. So place that joint D, that's what you have right here. Then at C, it's a pin as well. Expect two reactions at C. It's a pin connection there, so expect two reactions. So the two reactions at C are the ones shown here. So from here as well, uh, you can take moments about T, C. The only unknown will now be this this uh this force in member db then you'd have found the force member bd and it happens to be this one take moment about c and uh, that sorts out the whole entire problem because uh the, 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 the problem must us to get the force in in i mean the, the hydraulic force h uh with the hydraulic force is in this member and it's the same one that we got when we found the uh, F, FB. It's the same one. Uh, so then the next thing was to get the force member BD, which is this one. So that concludes uh, that question. Then uh, I believe this should be the last question in this tutorial sheet. You have um, question 6 86, which says the pumping unit of the, the, pump, the pumping unit is used to recover oil when the working beam ABC is horizontal. The working beam ABC is horizontal. The force acting in the wire line at the wheel head is 250. So you have a 250 force acting here. Uh, determine the torque, which is M which must be exited by the motor in order to overcome this load. The horse head C weighs 60 pounds and has the center of gravity at G, C. It's good that you've already, you already been given the position where right, right to place these weights. So remember weight always acts vertically downwards. So for example, the 60 pounds, so G, C is here, so it will come exactly here. Then um, the working beam ABC has a weight of 130 pounds and the center of gravity at GB. So ABC, ABC will have the weight acting at this center of gravity, place like that. Um, and the counter weight has a weight of 200 pounds and has a center of gravity, GW. So you have another one, which is a GW, which is this one. So you place a weight there also. The pin man D is pin connected at its end and has negligible weight. So the pin man and then D, you have T there, D there, and the same D is pin connected and has a negligible weight. So because it has a negligible weight, 
um, then you won't have any weights that will be placed here, but only reactions that are due to to the pin connection at G. So that's your free body diagram, which is the most important thing. So the first free body diagram is the one showing this. So the, all these parameters, these lengths are given in the question here. And given here, you have one there, six, then you have five. Free body diagram of taken is A, B, C. And then you know this A, D, the two force member, you only have one force there. And then at B, at G, you have the weight there. And you also have the weight and the 250 pounds, which is the tension. So, and then also the type of connection that we have at B, at the bottom here, it's a pin connection there. So that's the one showing these reactions here. So you can take moments about B and calculate for the force AD. Then take summation of the forces in the X. You have uh, the X component of FAD equal to BX, which is a uh, FAD cosine 70 degrees supposed to be equal to BX. The summation of the forces in the Y as well gives us BY. Okay. Those those are not shown in the calculations here because they're not really they're, they're, they're not really needed in the next calculations. So the next calculation is the one showing the the isolated member which is E D. So isolating E D and remembering that there's a moment there, which is actually what we are looking for in the question. This moment. So uh, the free body diagram for this member, you'd already gotten this, the force member AD, you already have it. So it's given there. Then you have the weight also at GW, which is given, so weight always acts vertically downwards. So that's vertically downwards. And then you haven't isolated uh, this, type of connection, the pin at D hasn't been isolated. Because if you isolate it, it will require you to get the, if you isolate it, it will definitely require you to get to get its its reactions. But leaving it just like that attached to this, then here you have two unknowns also at E, which are, which are these two unknowns, the one in the Y and then the one also in the X. So for this particular question, uh, the, this, this is the x-axis, it's a rotated axis, and this is the y-axis. So this rotating this axis just simplifies everything. So when you take a moment, you're only going to consider this, say, 3, you multiply by this, the different distance. Then uh, you have this, and then you get the component in the y multiplied by uh, 3 plus 2.5, which is 5.5. So then the only, and then EY and EX won't have an impact in terms of the moment. So the only unknown will be the moment itself, M, and because it was shown as clockwise, that's why it has a minus sign here, and we assume negative direction. So we happen to get this as the, uh, the moment. Okay. Uh, so we still have one more question. So this is a uh, this is question six dash eighty eight, which reads the machine shown is used for forming metal plates. It consists of two toggles A, B, C, and D, E, F, which are operated by the hydraulic cylinder H. The toggles push the movable bar G forward, pressing the plate P into the cavity. If the force which the plate exits on the head is P is equal to 12 kilonewton, determine the force F in the hydraulic cylinder when U is equal to 30 degrees. Okay, so you have this. Uh, 
angle here given as 30 degrees there. This angle here is also 30 degrees. Uh, you have the lengths there. Then uh, you're looking for the force in this uh, in this cylinder here, which is F. So the most important thing to note here is this 12 kilonewton that's placed horizontally. Uh, and because of the because of symmetry means this 12 was shared equally at, at the joint F and at, at C. So you expect to have a six, a six kilo pounds at T, F and another six at T, at C. That's if you isolate this, this member here. Remember when you isolate this member, let me just draw it, maybe to help. What you're going to have is something like this. That's when I isolate member uh, uh, CF. You have this. So this weight is, is placed in exactly. I mean, the, the force is placed exactly there. That's 12. And then you have uh, forces. Forces are. Uh, at F there, you have force there as well as another force there at C, where you have a straight line there. Those are two of them. There'll be one in the Y like that. But then uh, when you do summation of the forces in the X, you realize that this force here and this force here must be the same, so especially that the distance from the distance from this point to this point and from this point to this point is the same. So, or, or, yeah, or simply just take a moment about, about this joint here. The Y component won't have an impact. Then you have this total length multiplied by the reaction there that you don't know in the X is going to be equal to this 12 multiplied by this length here, which is half the entire length here. So you find that the unknown here will be like, um, it will give us six which is the same muscle here to be six as well. And this force has been distributed equally six and six. So that's what you carry forward in this when you dismember the next member, which is the member FE. That six will have to appear there. Uh, but the member itself is a two force member. So meaning the X component of this same force in this member would have already been gotten, which is the same six that we found. That's the X component. Then you can go ahead to find, I mean, the, the, the Y component, you don't know it. So when you draw a free point diagram for member EF, it's something like this, that will have just the X component there and then the Y component like that. And then um, at E, at joint E, you have to be careful so how you place the reactions there. You can just put two, two of them there. And then you have also member ED, member ED, which will be like this. So if member ED is also a two force member. So if, if, if you can just isolate a joint alone like that as a pin, you expect a force there that will be due to uh, DE, the, result, the resultant of the force member DE acts along member DE because it's a two force member. And when you isolate the joint, you have this force coming like that. Then at this force, that's where I'm going to place the, I mean at the joint, so I'm going to place this, this force you're looking for, which is F, like that. And then you, you expect also the two reactions. Uh, from this also to come and appear here, one in the X and then one in the Y. Okay, so from this report diagram, that's why you can get this F now. Okay, what I'm just trying to explain is this. So this is our first report diagram, the six. I've explained how it came about. And then we take a moment about E there. We can have FY. When you find FY, summation of the forces in the Y gives us EY and D. Of the force in the X gives us C. 
e x prime e. So this is six, then this is going to be uh, the same magnitude is 3.4664 upwards. So these ones here, these reactions will be transferred to the next free body diagram, which is a free body diagram now for the joint, not a member, but a joint. So look at the joint here of the force, the, the force in the member DE. So that force, we assume, I mean, we assume the member to be in, in compression. That's why here the force is pressing towards the joint. And then there's this six, then there's also the three point, which are the contributions from this coming to the joint, plus the force placed at the joint. So here the common mistake is to place the force here, F, and then come and place the force also on the joint. When you place the force, an external force on one thing, then don't place it on the next thing. So in this now, we can do summation of the forces in the x as well as summation of the forces in the y. Starting with the x, this gets us FDE to be this value here. Just then sum the forces in the y, we finally have the force in the hydraulic cylinder to be 6.93 kilonewtons, which is the, the force we're looking for in the question. So that's basically how this question was supposed to be, to be tackled. So uh, this basically marks our study on uh, frame analysis. So the next tutorial should be something to do with machines, some tutorial on machines. So these, are, these questions are on frames. Hope to do some more questions on machines. All right, uh, thank you very much.